And we're going to get, get started right away with the first speaker, Ami Tao, who is a postdoc at University of Southern California in the Chen's lab, and he's going to be talking about um, ways to map 3D genome folding with new cross-linking agents. Take it away. Okay. Uh, can you guys hear me? Hello? I can. Okay. Yes, I can hear you. Um, so yeah, um, so hello everyone. Um, my name is Eiko from Lincoln Lab at UIC and our collaborator is Nan Hua from French Albert Lab at the same university. So um, today my topic is um, mapping genome 3D structure by direct DNA and DNA photo processing and click enrichment. So I will first introduce the background for uh, direct capturing the DNA proximity. And I will <clears throat> go on to introduce the design of the probe and the general procedure. And I will present you with some initial results. So as you all know, the formaldehyde is a major reagent mediating the DNA protein crosslink. Uh, it, it is uh, very useful, but it has certain limitations, uh, such as shown here. So when there's uh, like no protein mediation inside the nucleus, there's uh, direct DNA-DNA contacts the formaldehyde cannot fix. Or um, because the formaldehyde has low diffusing from the outside into the inner core of the nucleus, so it causes a lot of artifacts and also generates a lot of problems for enzyme accessibility. And for many of the transcription factors, uh, we have observed uh, they are pretty dynamic and um, formaldehyde fixation is relatively slow compared to this. So there are several uh, literatures listed here that uh, shows uh, missing information or artifacts by the, generated by the formaldehyde fixation. So we think why not uh, we just uh, directly detect the DNA proximity uh, without dependence on the protein mediation in between them. So that's why we uh, developed this uh, direct DNA proximity capturing and uh, follow cross-linking probe. So the general design, as you can see here, for this probe consists of three parts. The first part is the molecular recognition head, uh, which can be serotonin DAP, as in the matter group matters, or intercalators or the DNA base analogs. And also the second part is a photoactivable moiety, which can use the reactions from the serotonin DNA or aerial azides or benzophenols. <clears throat> we have also uh, included an enrichment tag, which can use pink chemistry or cell ginger chemistry. So the general design of our probe is shown here with two uh, heads, the beast uh, molecular recognition heads for the DNA and uh, affinity enrichment tag in between. So in this uh, presentation, the output is basically based on the serotonin binding to the DNA. So serotonin is a three-ring molecule, which uh, can bind to the thymine under the UV reaction 350 nanometer, which is pretty quick, uh, either from its lactal ring or the fuel ring. And this uh, binding to the thymine is covalently zinc. So as you can see here, our design of the probe consists of two serotonins and also the flexible arms. Uh, importantly, the serotonin has a, also serves as a photoactivable moiety that can bind to DNA instantly. And also, uh, we have an uh, alkyne group in the middle, which serves as an enrichment tag. And by the click chemistry, it can, connect it, it can be connected to the uh, biotin azide and the biotin streptobiotic interaction so that probe together with the tether DNA can be pulled down on the streptobiotic beat. So through this, the DNA proximity reserved by the probe can be uh, put on onto the bees. Uh, extract the DNA will ease the operation, improves uh, the efficiency of digestion and ligation on bees. And also, only the probe tethered DNA gets enriched. So the general procedure of our uh, <clears throat> design involves the incubation of our probe. And after the UV photo crosslink, we extract the DNA. Because the DNA right now, the proximity information is already reserved. And the rest of the step is pretty similar to the TCC, which involves the history digestion, click chemistry, put on the bees. And then the, we share the DNA off from the bees. And then we put on again onto the biotin DCTP to further reach the signal. And later we do a pair in sequencing. So uh, um, we designed this because it has obvious advantages like uh, fat, very fast UV light reaction of tethering and direct capture of DNA, DNA in situ without the need for the protein, and more efficient workout procedure because you extract the whole DNA up and then you can do the subsequent operations on the bees. 
So it first seeks to confirm that our bees can bind to the genome inside the cell and the click chemistry is doing well. So for this assay, as shown here, uh, after incubated with the probe, our cell is being illuminated by this uh, red smiling face UV laser. So instead of using the biotin azide, we use here a rhodamine azide. It can still do the click chemistry by the azide to the all-time group of our probe. But the rhodamine here has a flow of four to indicate whether the, uh, our probe has successfully bind to the genome and uh, shows that smiling face pattern. And as the picture is <coughs> showing here, you can see that uh, it is successfully bind to the uh, DNA inside the nucleus and shows the pattern as we uh, UV laser. And next, we seek to confirm the uh, digestion and the put on the bees. So this lane one sh basically shows the DNA of every condition before the bees pull down. Lane two basically shows the DNA sheared off after bees pull down. So you can see that when there's no probe, no UV or no clear chemistry, there's no, hardly no uh, DNA can be pulled down on the bees, but when everything is present, the DNA can be pulled down. Uh, next, we confirm the uh, on bees ligation. And we basically uh, did a, Protein SK digestion to, uh, to elude the DNA of the bees before the ligation and after the ligation. And as the gel shown here, you can see that the uh, DNA has successfully been ligated onto the bees. So we submit, uh, prepare the library and submit the library results uh, for an initial, not very deep sequencing. As you can see here, the heat map uh, is, uh, is very different from the high C1. It does not have very uh, prominent features as. Uh, Often seen in a heavy map, and we have, but we have the uh, very contacts of uh, two million, and that accounts for about twenty percent. So um, we we then think of the reasons for no prominent feature, and uh, possibly it could be because uh, our experiment design that the probe is too short or uh, not proper probe to DNA ratio or the other like the sharing procedure introduced some like junk or relegation uh, contaminations uh, or the bees uh, random ligation. To uh, rule out the random ligation on the bees, we uh, examined the average contact versus the genomic distance for every chromosome. And we can, uh, as an example shown here, almost every one of them shows a decrease in pattern of the average contact versus the genomic distance. And um, also, they show they have each shown some um, some features of the in the heat contact map for each chromosome. But uh, we're still in the process of analyzing the data and adjusting our experiments. So uh, the central question is that we don't really know much about the reality of direct DNA DNA proximity. Uh, it could be that the um, the signals we're capturing is uh, is um, mixture with a random signal, or it could be this is a truth of the direct DNA proximity inside the cell. Or each cell has its different and specific direct DNA uh, proximity, and we're just capture, capturing the average of them. Uh, one reason for this is because our uh, surrounding basically, uh, as I pre previously mentioned, Basically, it can commonly bond to only the thymine inside the DNA by intercalating. So by aligning our sequence results with the DNA stick result, we can see that our surrounding binding site indicates the accessible DNA structure. Uh, it correlates very well. The correlation coefficient is about 0.8 or 0.9. So along this uh, notion for the developing direct DNA proximity capture probe using uh, photocrosslink, uh, we then seek to um, develop other probe derivatives, such, a, such as shown here, the DAPI probe. Uh, as you can see, the DAPI is basically a DNA matter group binder. And in this probe design, we have designed a bioorthogonal clicky re reaction moiety on the DAPI probe. So the DAPI probe will be first uh, incubated and bind to the in situ lead. To the DNA. We also design an octopus dendritic core, which has uh, multiple arms with uh, variable lengths that can uh, tether this uh, DAPI base. And so as the DAPI base tethered to the DNA after digestion can be captured. So this project is still uh, in progress. In summary, um, we have uh, developed a DNA-DNA photocross-linking method with a click enrichment tag. 
and has tested the feasibility of the rodent based probe. It worked. Uh, but we have a lot of problems dealing with like the data analysis and the parameters adjustment. Uh, but it sets the stage for the future library preparation and our probe designs for this kind of approach. So uh, by that, I will thank uh, members from the data lab and also Nanhua, our uh, computational uh, collaborator from the Frank Albert lab at USC. Thank you. Great. Um, thank you, Yi, for, for your presentation. So we're, we're going to open the floor for questions now, and I'll just kick it off while people gather their thoughts. Um, my first question um, in, in looking at your data today is um, essentially at the same time as this new cross-linking method, which you're trying to validate, you also have this challenge of trying to get very high quality, high C data with um, a low number of reads, and that that's quite a bit, it's quite um, um, expensive to get the number of reads to actually see many of the more salient structural features. So I wondered if you consider using something like a gold standard where uh, locus in which by many different orthogonal methods, it is uh, the field is confident that a long-range contact exists. And, and the first thing I thought of is the, um, the LCR contact of many globin genes and erythroid progenitors. And, and could it be possible that you could just start with that particular loop as a gold standard and then try to adjust the parameters of your method? Yeah, yeah, that's a very good suggestion. Actually, uh, yeah, we're working on that right now. So uh, we're still like uh, trying to evaluate the different uh, 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 influence the parameters can can bring to this experiment. So yeah, that's a very good point. So we're still in the data analysis approach right now. So uh, yeah, we're working on that. Thanks. Other questions? Okay, well, um, I thank you all for um, uh, listening and, and you for a great talk, and we're going to now move on to the second.